Imperialism is a turn-based strategy game from 1997 developed by Frog Studio and published by SSI. It is a lesser known title that has been undeservedly relegated to a forgotten status. The storyline here is straightforward, you pick one of the six major countries in the world and put the era of industrialization in overdrive. Create the strongest industry, marine and military force, then set on forcing the end of everyone to elect you leader of the free world. <laughs> How things never change, right? There is a great complexity at first when laying out your planning on resources to exploit them as appropriately as possible, and you have a wide range of resources from three types of food to wool, cotton and timber, as well as a staple of the industrial age, coal. You'll need to connect these to your capital to process them and savor the fruit of your labor. As you will be laying down railroads for that usage, you will also encounter impassable terrain at first that will need to be circumcised by ports offering access through waterways. For this you will need to build up a elaborate force of support units. The unit creation is straightforward here, once you get a basic symbiosis behind it. You will need to create unskilled labor that required basic industrialized goods. These brand new souls in your empire then can be sent to trade school in order to increase their value and then, once properly educated in the fine arts of industrializations, you can transfer them into civilian or military units. And we have a good range of civilian units, from the prospector that investigate the lands to uncover hidden resources, to the engineers that build railways and ports, to miners, farmers and ranchers, doing just as you expect. Supporting the vast economy chain will require you to focus the industrial buildings in your capital. Each of these aforementioned unspecialized workers can be put to slave away in the vast industrial compounds to process basic goods into carefully processed products. As you progress in the game, you find that almost everything is intertwined, and for a good industrialization of your nation, you cannot leave any part unequal to the rest. This becomes, in the later stages, a complex puzzle where you will need to weigh the consequence, for example, on focusing on paper rather than lumber in order to further specialize your population in the near future. The redeeming factor on the economy model available in imperialism is that everything happens in your capital, so you will only really need a great focus on a specific area to produce everything. Consequentially, and also means that there is a certain obscurity associated with the expansion of your empires, as you will not exploit anything outside your newly acquired natural resources. The gameplay also brings a constant revolution on great new technologies that will help to enrich your empire. The problem I have with the system present is its linearity. Everyone gets the same technology at the same time, and you will need to drop a hefty sum of cash to acquire it. It does at least balance a little bit what you will find across the world, as no nation will be able to truly outpace the others in the technological prodigy. The war facet that has been historically a driving factor for the accelerated industrialization with massive urge for land grabs of minor states to abuse their natural resources is strangely absent. There is a good variety of units available to be honest, uh, it can easily be streamlined into having the most long range artery when distilled to its base. Most units are aberrant inefficiencies to the point of being wasted resources. The tactical combat phase is interesting but the AI often shows lack of strategic thinking and will flee right away when on even ground Quite unnerving, but still satisfying as it fills a long-lasting patient left empty since Heroes of Might and Magic. The war on the water though is different. You will need to build warships to move them around to engage the enemy fleet, as well as protect your ports from blockade and blockading enemy ports. Much less interesting considering the heavy price of the ships themselves that I can barely even have a standing navy ever. 
Now, during gameplay, most of my matches are exactly the same. After about a hundred turn, the AI will start duck billing on the weakest nation until they're all wiped out, which is annoying as you can easily be caught up in the moment of weakness and duck piled on by everyone else with absolutely no way to pull yourself out. On the graphic goal side, I must admit the game is quite pleasing. The overall map is beautiful with a soothing color palette used that can easily engulf way too many hours of your life in a single swing. The capital city also features beautiful drawing that upgrade up as your civilization become more and more advanced and industrialized. The combat units are also adequate, looking for the era the game has been released. As for the sounds, we do have a couple of issues here. First and foremost, the music appears to be pleasing and nice to listen to but for some reasons it is glitchy and rarely plays, so I am let down to a saddening silence for most of my playthroughs, but this might just be the GOG version causing this issue. The difficulty of imperialism arises from its hard learning curve thrown at you right off the bat, but if you can mitigate it and grasp around the mechanics, you will find that Imperialism is a quite simple game at its core, so simple that it actually becomes mindlessly repetitive. The Empire management facet becomes redundant but still enticing until you start conquering a large swath of lands where you'll need to develop it all. The war phase is also interesting but here too can become a cumbersome annoyance. Still, I can easily recommend this title to anyone with patience to pick up a 20 year old title and enough time to learn its quirk and features. Hopefully you've enjoyed this small review of imperialism, and if you did, make sure to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.